Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Are you a new user to Luminar 4? Or maybe you're just wondering if you should purchase Luminar 4. Or maybe you own a previous version of Luminar and wondering if you should upgrade. Well, in this video, I'm going to go over some of the major features in Luminar 4. And I'm going to give you a quick overview of the software. In the description below this video, I'll have links to Skylum's website. And there you could download a trial copy of Luminar 4. I believe it's for 15 days. And you could try it out for yourself. And I encourage you to try it before you buy it. Because in the past, there have been some reports where Luminar crashed quite often on Windows computers. I use Mac, so I'm not sure if that problem is fixed. And especially if you're using a Windows computer, definitely download the trial version and use it and see how it works for you. Also, in the description below the video, I have a discount code. I think it's 10% you could save off the price of Luminar. Although, if Luminar is ever on sale, they disabled the discount code so it doesn't work. But try it. It doesn't hurt. Now, when you open up Luminar 4 for the first time, you won't see this. You won't see all your images. You don't really have to import images into Luminar. You could just go to where they are on your computer. What you would do is on the right-hand side, you could see these three panels. We have Library, Edit, and Info. If you're in the Library panel, at the bottom where it says folders, you could click this little plus sign and then you could just navigate to where your images are on your computer and go to the root folder, the main folder that contains all the other folders of your images and just click on that and add it. And Luminar will add that folder to Luminar and all the subfolders. Once it does that, it'll actually sort them up here in the shortcuts and you can see it will sort what images were taken in what year, um, ones you recently edited later on, recently edited, uh, recently added, things like that. So all that will be up in here. Now, if you ever want to sort images from different folders, meaning you have a number of different folders that have different images from, let's say, this location, and I want to put them all in one location, but I don't necessarily want to move them in different folders on my hard drive, that's when you would use an album. And you could just click here, and create a new album and then drag images into this album so we could give it a name and I'm just gonna call it test for our test. And I moved this one image here into it. So we'll go back to all our raw files and I'll hit the G key on the keyboard that will get us back into grid view. And you can see up here, grid view is right here. They call it gallery view. Next to that is the single image mode and you click on that and we'll be in looking at a single image. Now. If you have images on your camera and you want to get them off your camera onto your computer, you could do that through Luminar. Also, go to File and then go down to Import Images to a Folder. And from there, you could navigate to where they are on your memory card or camera and then bring them to where you want to bring them. And that will copy them from the card and put them where you want them. So you could do that. Also, if you don't want to go through all this rigmarole and you just want to edit a single image, you could do that as well. You could go up to uh, File, Edit Single Image. So really, they got you covered. You could have all your images organized on your hard drive. You could sort them in albums. You could find them by various shortcuts by year, most recently added or most recently edited, and so on. Or you could just take them off your memory card and put them where you want on your computer through Luminar, or you could just edit a single image if you want. Now, if you're in the library module, there are some things you could do here. You could sort your images. Uh, you could decide whether you like an image or not like an image. Uh, you may notice, let's say on this image here, there's in the little corner here, there's a little heart. I could click on that. That means I like it. I could click on it again. It means I necessarily don't like it. Or you could use keyboard shortcuts. They're the same as Lightroom, if you're familiar with Lightroom. P means pick. So you could click on P on your keyboard and it will make that heart glow. <laughs> if you want to unpick it, hit the U key. If you want to reject it, you don't like the image and you're going to delete it later, click X and that will delete it. If you want to undo that, click that U key again. 
Also, there's star ratings there. You could see their stars, and you could hit the the keyboard numbers three, gives you three stars. Four gives you four, and so on. Zero will remove the stars. So that's kind of the quick overview of the library module. But let's say that um, we want to get in and do some editing of an image. So let's pick an image. Uh, let's uh, pick this one, I guess. Let's say we want to edit this image. Well, we would go over to the edit panel. So over here on the right hand side, there's edit. And you can see that there's layers capability here. So we have our layers. This is the layer with the image. And um, Luminar uses the filter method, meaning uh, they have a number of different filters that you would apply to your image. And each filter does something unique to the image. And they're located down here on the very right hand side. And you're organized in, in certain categories. This is called essentials. These are all the essentials filters that uh, Skylum feels are most often used in Luminar. Below that is creative. These are all kind of things you could do like replace a sky, add uh, sun rays, and do different things that are more creative and more arty uh, to your image. If you're working with portraiture, you would go to the portrait tab and there's a lot of filters there, or a number of filters there to help you uh, process a portrait. Then below that, they have a category called professional. These are a little more advanced filters, maybe something that um, you might have been used to using in Photoshop. Well, they're available here in this professional tab. Now, throughout these, you could mix and match. You don't have to stay in one. You could do one from this one, one from this one, or you could jump all around. It doesn't matter. Now, you may be wondering, well, where should you start? Well, usually I like to crop the image first, and there's a quick access to the crop tool right here at the very top, or you could go over here on the right, and you could see right here, canvas. If you click on that, you'll see there's tools here, crop and rotate, erase tool, which you would use if you have sensor spots or dust spots or, or water spots on your lens, anything like that, you would use the erase tool. Clone and stamp is if you absolutely need to remove something like uh, it's a street scene and there's a, a, a paper cup on the ground and you want to remove that, use clone and stamp. You also could duplicate things you have a bouquet of flowers and you want to duplicate the flowers, you want to clone more flowers in the scene, you could use the clone and stamp tool. This image here actually doesn't need any of these, but that's where you would find them. Now lenses and geometry are here too. This is important, especially if you're working with a DSLR that doesn't store the lens corrections right in the raw file, you're going to have to correct them here. To do that, it's as simple as clicking the checkbox. You could see the image change so it, it removed the distortion automatically. You could also remove chromatic aberration and defringe the unit uh, image. You could also uh, modify it if it doesn't look quite right here with this slider. Uh, if you want to reset a slider to its uh, default position, just double click right on the slider. You could also then de-vignette or de-vignette the midpoint. Like uh, if it's if you're having a vignette that's off-centered, you would move that. Also, if you're doing uh, architectural photography, cityscape photography, and the buildings are falling backwards or using a very wide-angle lens in the images, the end at the edge of the image, the uh, the uh, buildings are tilted in. You could do all that with these uh, sliders down here. Now, in this case of this image, I think I'm okay just clicking these three checkboxes and I'm done with that. So now I could go on and process it. And there's kind of two different ways you could go about doing this. If you really want to do it very quickly, get in and out, use the AI or the artificial intelligent filters that are available in Luminar. There's a number of them. And in the essentials grouping, uh, we have AI enhance. If you click on that, you can see that's really two sliders, AI accent. And if I move that to the right, you can see it pretty much processes the image. And then it has a sky enhancer as well. And this knows where the sky is through artificial intelligence and will just affect the sky. And you can see how it does that. So really, I could come in here, just do these two sliders and say, I'm done. Or you could do just part of it, maybe just kind of bring out some detail there and go in and do some more adjusting with some of the other filters. The light filter is similar to the basic tab that's in Lightroom. You have uh, color temperature. You could use the drop down, use any of these uh, settings that come in with your 
with your raw file like you know go to tungsten it's going to make it very kind of odd looking we could warm it up with shade uh, I'm just going to stay with as shot or you could get a white balance by clicking on the little eyedropper tool when that's active your cursor turns into an eyedropper and then you could click on something that should have no color in it should be either white or middle gray you could try black too but usually something like that you click and it will give you a white balance for the scene I like that that looks pretty good we have the exposure we have smart contrast it's a contrast slider pretty much and move that up I'm gonna bring highlights down a little bit open up shadows just a little bit then under advanced settings we have the whites and the blacks so you could get a white and black point as well we can move those we also have a tone curve if you're used to using the tone curve to add contrast or anything you could do that here um, in this image I don't think I need to do anything with the tone curve so we have the light as well now we have structure this is I'm just going to add kind of some mid-tone contrast to the image so it's going to give it a little bit more sharpness a little more pop and we could control that with the boost slider there as well then we have the color slider this of course is saturation and vibrance saturation will affect every single pixel equally you see if I pull it all the way down we took the color completely out of the image so it affects every pixel evenly if you have a color that's already saturated and you move the saturation slider to the right you'll oversaturate it vibrance on the other hand is a little more subtle it won't oversaturate a color so if you move this to the right it will bring colors to saturation but won't oversaturate them also vibrance doesn't affect the yellows oranges and the reds as much as it does the other colors so if you have a person in the shot Vibrance is a better choice for their skin tone. It won't affect their skin tone as, as much as it will the surrounding scenery. That way you won't accidentally give them a sunburn or anything like that. Also, if you have a color cast on your image, you can remove it with that. We also have advanced sighting, uh, settings there. This is like the HSL tab that's in Lightroom. So you could affect all the colors individually, the U, saturation, luminance of each of the colors, uh, red, green, blue, all the different colors in the image. I think this winter scene doesn't need any of that but that gives you an idea you have a lot of power in these filters and a lot of the filters have parts that are hidden like this advanced settings which is really an HSL filter kind of hidden in there um, if you want to shoot black and white or process your image into black and white you would do that with the black and white conversion tab uh, details enhancer is just going to enhance details exactly what it says so you could do the smaller details like you can see it's really affecting these trees off in the distance. In post-production, I'll zoom in right here so you could see what I'm talking about right now. And I'll move it to the right. And you can see how it really enhances those trees out in the distance. So in medium details and then larger details as well. So you can move those. We have advanced settings there as well. And we have details protection, details masking, all that I could do in future videos. And by the way, I've done over a hundred videos on Luminar in the past. Uh, I've done quite a few on Luminar 4 already, even though it was just released, I was able to get a pre-release copy and I've done at least six videos already. Um, if anyone wants me to do anything specific about Luminar, let me know in the comment section below and I'll be glad to do it. Now with the noise, we have luminosity and color noise. And we also have advanced settings and you could kind of give it a boost as well. So with the noise, I always recommend you zoom in. Uh, to zoom in just click on the image and you'll zoom in click on the image again and you'll zoom back out we have a landscape enhancer this is another uh, although it doesn't say ai on it it's kind of got some ai features in that it will affect the image um, that most landscape photographers might want done like a lot of times when we're taking uh, landscape images there's haze and we could dehaze it with this slider here uh, we could uh, golden hour we could add just a little bit of a yellow warm warm look to the image and we also have a foliage and foliage enhancer which just kind of enhances the yellows and greens in the image as well so we could do that we have advanced settings and we have the hue of the foliage do you want the foliage more towards warmer colors or cooler colors and you could do that with that as well you'll notice that just about every filter has a mask so these are called filter masks so if you only want to apply this this specific filter to a specific part of the image you could do that and again that's probably beyond the scope of this video but I'll be glad to demonstrate filter masks in a, f a future video just let me know in the comments below 
To finish this image off, I'm just going to add a vignette. You could choose the subject. Uh, when you click on this, your cursor turns into a plus sign and you could just say the subject is this building and I'll click on it once. So the center of my vignette will be at that building. If I move this to the right, I'll add a white or light vignette. If I move it to the left, I'll add a darker vignette. And I could affect the size and feathering. Go to advanced settings. And we could affect the feathering there. And we could kind of brighten up the inner uh, center part too with inner light. So we could just kind of bring that, make that brighter. So it's a little darker around the edges. It kind of forces everyone ga everyone's gaze more towards the middle. So that's pretty cool. Pretty nice uh, little vignette filter. Has a lot of features. So overall, that's the kind of the the layout of Luminar 4. Again, uh, if you're wondering whether you should upgrade, definitely download the trial version. It's a fully working trial version. It's not limited in any way. It just stops working after 15 days. Again, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to that. Uh, check it out. Also, if you choose to purchase it, make sure you try out my discount code. Uh, again, it might not work on some sale product, but if it's not on sale, you'll definitely save some bucks. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.